Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at chapter 16 from Wheelock's Latin Grammar. We're going to be introduced to this last category of adjectives, the third declension adjectives. So along with the first, second that we've already seen, like bonusaum, magnusaum, Latin also has a third category. The good news is these look very, very similar to third declension nouns. So all the endings that we've already memorized, we'll be able to reuse most of those. The main difference is whether or not it has three endings in the nominative, singular two or one. So there are going to be three different categories. And we'll see, we'll look at a chart here in a second. They're not going to be very different. Mainly it's just going to be the nominative singular. So just to review, there's a, a chart of our I stem nouns like kiwis, kiwis. And you'll notice the adjective of two endings looks very, very similar, if not downright identical, except for a couple of differences there. Masculine and feminine share a form. Neuters have a similar but separate form. So let's look at this example, fortis, forte. So when you see adjectives in a dictionary entry, they give you the, the different forms for the nominative singular. So in this case, you know, it just has the two forms, so it's an adjective of two endings. Genitive is also fortis, dative forti in both cases. Accusative, fortem if it's masculine or feminine, but again forte if it's neuter, because of that neuter rule, where the accusative and the nominative are the same. Ablative, singular, notice it just has an I instead of an E. So here's really the major difference, it's forti whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter. So instead of an E, it has an I. When we get to the plural, it looks just like those you know, third declension adjectives that we reviewed before, the I stem type. Fortes, we'll do the masculine, feminine first. Fortes, fortium, so it has an I-U-M. Fortibus, fortes, fortibus. Then in the plural, for the neuters, we have fortia, so it has the I-A, fortium, fortibus, fortia, fortibus. So again, not much different, and luckily these will be fairly easy to remember. So that's a third declension adjective of two endings. Here's the third declension adjective of three. So you'll notice it just has separate masculine, feminine, and neuter endings, only in the nominative singular. So other than that, it looks identical. So here's an example, acre, acris, acre. So it has a separate masculine, feminine, and neuter form, but only in the nominative singular. Once we get into the other cases, masculine, feminine, share a form, neuter has a separate but similar form. So we get acris, acri, acrem, acri. So again, there's that I instead of an E. If it's neuter singular, acre, acris, acri, acre, acri. So lots of vowels there on that one. Then we go to the plural, if it's masculine or feminine, notice we only have that one ending from now on. It's only three endings in the nominative singular. Here in the plural, acres, acrium, acribus, acres, acribus. And if we do neuter plurals, acria, acrium, acribus, acria, acribus. So more stuff to memorize, but the good news is a lot of these endings we've seen before. There's also a class called adjectives of one ending. And what that means is, in the nominative singular, you only have one form, whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter. So notice if that's three endings, the dictionary entry shows all three forms for the nominative singular, acer, acris, acre. Adjectives of one ending, it shows you the nominative and the genitive forms. So we have adjectives like potens. So we have potens, potensis. Masculine and feminine, identical. Neuter, almost identical, except for the neuter rule. Yeah, potens, potentis, potenti, potentem, potenti. So again, it's got the I instead of an E. If it's neuter, potens, potentis, potenti. Potens, again, in the accusative singular, because it's neuter, potenti. When we go to the plurals, just like we would expect, potentes, potentium, potentibus, potentes, potentibus. With neuter plural, potentia, potentium, potentibus, potentia, potentibus. So 
Again, stuff we've already memorized, innings look real similar to third declension, I send downs. So just remember there are three categories. Adjectives of three innings, two innings, or one ending. So notice they do decline just like I stem nouns, but those couple of exceptions. Ablative singular has an I instead of an E. Genitive plural for all genders is I-U-M. And the neuter has an I-A in the nominative, an accusative, and an evocative. So they look different, but they're still going to agree with the nouns they modify, number, gender, and case. But keep in mind those endings aren't always identical. So these adjectives, third declension adjectives, can modify first declension noun, second declension, third declension, fourth, fifth declension. So the endings won't necessarily always match. It's nice when they do, but it's not always going to work out that way. So be mindful of that. So how we use these things. You know, just like in English, uh, adjectives modify nouns for pronouns, and they usually tell us a little bit more about it. So we'll put some names with some of these special uses. Attributive adjective. Just that simple modifier that we're all used to. It tells us more about the noun than it modifies. So for example, we're fortes. So what kind of we're is it? What kind of man? It's the brave man. So it just serves to give us an attribute about the whatever the subject is. Predicate adjective. If we have the verb to be, we need to have something on the other side of that verb to tell us a little bit more about the subject. So remember, just like in English, uh, the verb to be kind of acts like an equal sign. This is equal to that. So we have an example here. Weary sunt fortes. So sunt right there in the middle. Those two things are equivalent, basically, just like we do it in English. So we can translate weary sunt fortes. The men are brave. So that's a predicate adjective. We see the, the adjective show up in the predicate there. The third use we have for it, substantive adjective. So that's when we use an adjective in place of a noun. to so tell us a little bit more about what's going on. Uh, fortuna fortes ad uat. Fortune helps the brave. So we don't necessarily say the brave men or the brave women or the brave whatever. So we know, just like we use it in English, that adjective stands in place of the noun. Now, again, we could translate these things without having to think about it, but we'll just put some tags on them so we see how they're used. The fourth way we can use adjectives, objective complement. So these are kind of tricky. Yeah, it's not really a big deal when you see them, uh, but think about what this is telling us here. Objective complement describes the result of the action of the verb. So I'll give you an example. Virtus fecit viros fortes. So virtue, virtue, what did virtue do? Virtue made the men, viros, brave. So it just tells us, it, it complements the object and tells us a little bit more about how the action of the verb works out. So we got those four specialized uses. We have the same thing in English, we just don't, have, don't really think about it um, too much in those terms. But there are different ways to use them. Remember uh, that in Latin, it's almost backwards from the way we do it in English. If you've taken Spanish, you're pretty used to this. Uh, adjectives follow the nouns that they modify most of the time. And remember, Latin has no set word order, so you never know what you're going to get. But usually, that's where you're going to see them. So you'll see the adjectives following the nouns they modify. So, for example, we would say, uh, in English, we would say the brave man. But it would show up in Latin, just like in Spanish, as you know, the man, and then brave would come after it. So, we're kind of used to this no word order, so it's not much of a big deal. Let's look at the vocabulary for this chapter. We have I taught, I taught it. This can be uh, a period of life, an age, it can mean time. So, we see it used many ways. It's basically talking about time. Auditor, auditoris, so like when you audit a class. This comes from the verb audio, but when it's a noun, auditor, auditoris, it means the listener or somebody who's in an audience. Clementia, clementiae, so mildness, gentleness, mercy. 
mens mentis, which means mind, which also means thought or intention. Satura, saturai. So that's satire, a specific type of um, writing style. And here we have an adjective of three endings, acher, acris, acre. That means something like sharp, eager, but it can also mean severe or fierce. So again, sometimes you have to kind of play with these uh, definitions to get the one that works the best. And here's uh, an adjective of two endings, brewis, brewe. Short, small, brief. Another third declension adjective of three endings, keller, kelleris, kellere. Swift, quick, rapidly. Here's one of two endings, deficile, deficile. Difficult, troublesome, hard. Dolkis, dolke. Means sweet, pleasant, agreeable. Faculis, facile. Easily or agreeable. So those two are fairly similar. Ingens, ingentis. So here's the third declension adjective of one ending. So notice it shows us the nominative and the gender. So ingens means huge. Eucundus, eucunda, eucundum. So here's one of those first second declension adjectives that we've seen before. So eucundus means joyful, pleasant, delightful, agreeable, those kind of things. Longus, longa, longum, like you'd expect it means long. Uh, omnis, omne. That's one of those third declension adjectives with two endings. Every or all. Here's another third declension of one ending. Potens, potentis. It's actually the present participle of postum. Uh, this means able, capable, strong, uh, mighty. Things like that. Next one here, senex. Senex, senex. This can be both an adjective and a noun. It means old man. That's where we get our term senator from. Senators were old old men. They people who had a lot of experience and had lived a long life. So it can also be used as a as an adjective itself. You can say old whatever. And we have the adverb quam, which I think we've seen before, but here we go. It's in the vocabulary. And here's some verbs. Rego, this is going to be an easy one to remember. Rego, regere, rexi, rectum. So that means to rule, to guide, to direct. So remember, rex means king, regina means queen. So what they would do would be very similar. Rego, regere. So that's your ability to rule. Let's look at the sentences for this chapter. And just like before, I'll read through them, and you know, if there's something to take note of as you as you go through these, I'll mention. Quam dulcis est libertas. Quam dulcis est libertas. Labor omnia wicket. So it's a little quote from Virgil. Fortuna fortes ad uvat. Fortuna fortes ad uvat. Another Cicero, quam celeris et acris est men. So you see those adjectives, think about how they're used. This next one mentions a mythological figure, Polyphemus. So don't worry about exactly what that word is. It's actually the name of a person, Polyphemus. He's the Cyclops. Polyphemus erat monstrum horrendum informe ingen. So you see a lot of adjectives there. It's probably telling us more about polyphemus. Varium et mutabile semper femina. So this one was interesting, so pay attention to that one. Facula est epigrammata belle scribere, sed librum scribere deficile est. So a little note for Marshall there. Ira furor brevis est animum regae. Era for a brevis est animum reggae. A couple more to go here. Ars poetica est non omnia dicere. So that's good advice there. Or ars poetic est non omnia dicere. Then we have nihil est ab omni parte beato. So keep in mind, endings don't always look exactly the same. Things can agree number, gender, and case and have different endings. 
Deal as op omni parte beatum. Couple more to go. Liber meus homines prudenti concilio alit. Liber meus homines prudenti concilio alit. Next one. Mater omnium bonarum artium sapientia est. There's kind of a long one from Seneca. Clementia regem. Salvum facet, nam amor omnium quium est inexpugnabile monumentum regis. Yeah, that's a big mouthful there. Vita est brevis ars longa. So this is actually a, a quote in Greek from Hippocrates, which is uh, retold in Latin by Seneca. Vita est brevis ars longa. Brevi tempus aetatis autem. Satis longum est ad bene vivenda. Another one of those good Cicero sentences. And one more. We wit et we wit per omnium saeculorum memoriam. So we wit et we wit per omnium saeculorum memoriam. So think about that one as we translate it. So that brings us to the end of this short video lecture for chapter 16. Uh, I'll see you next time for Chapter 17. Well, that takes.